On this season of Texas Home Improvement, we took on two projects, the bulkhead and do an Adams house. The bulkhead is finished. Now it's time to get Adam's house done. Smile. You woke up in Texas. I'm Jim Dutton, and I've been a contractor here in the great state of Texas for over 40 years. It ain't a good day till we tear something up. Tools make the job. To help as many people as I possibly could, I started a radio show over 20 years ago. Now to help even more people, I'm rolling up my sleeves and hitting the road. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, look how beautiful it is. In Texas, most contractors don't have to have a license, so it's buyer beware. And that's what you get when you hire a bootleg contractor. You don't know what you're talking about. I've been building homes for over... Yeah, and I've been fixing homes for over 40 years because of people like you. It doesn't work in Texas. This is Texas Home Improvement. Previously on Texas Home Improvement. Take this wall out to make the living room in here kind of more of a uniform space. The open concept. Yeah. We're at the lake house today. We're putting in a seawall and that's how much the ground has been eroded away by the, the lake. So while I was waiting, I thought I'd make use of my time and start pulling some more of those rocks off the fireplace. And I dropped a big one on my foot. No, we're, we're stuck in the lake. Stuck in the lake? So we got all the mud off the bottom, so now we're gonna strap on some chains and start pulling this thing out. This was a heck of a distraction, but we gotta get back to work on the seawall, cause time's ticking. So I got a call from my neighbor last night. We had a really bad storm blow through the lake house and a lot of trees were damaged. And I really hope my pine tree is okay. But it's early in the morning and I'm heading out and we're gonna see what's going on. All right, so you always want to make sure to read the directions. Now, when we purchased the floor, the sales rep recommended using this underlayment. But in reading the instructions now, it actually would void the warranty on the floor itself. And that's not going to do any of us any good. So we're actually going to take this underlayment out and put the floor down without any underlayment. Well, I've been gone for a couple of months. I'm finally getting back into town and ready to get back on to work. Being tied up for a month and a half, two months on rodeo, having COVID after that, and healing up from smashing my toe has all put me behind on these projects. I gotta see where we're at on this one. Dang, boy, you got a mess going in this place. I've been gone for rodeo and then COVID and stuff, but <clears throat> how, how are you expecting anybody to get anything done with all this stuff sitting around? <clears throat> Ceiling looks good and the fireplace looks good. As we always say, what have you been doing between two and four? Well, I've been working on what I can work on when I have the time and ability, so. We just end up bouncing around to different things and this is what you end up with. <laughs> so, so far you can see we got crate stone over. They did this wonderful fireplace. We still have the hearth to do. The hardest thing that we've done on the house so far is we got the ceiling put in place. That was a pain beyond pains. <laughs> and then over here you can see we've been getting the kitchen put together as well painting the cabinet doors, getting the cabinet boxes in place, getting it all ready for flooring. Even though it's a mess here at the project right now, I'm pretty happy with what Adam got accomplished without me there helping him out any. But I'm here to take over because we got to kick this in the butt and get this project done. All right, so we're gonna make a little change here on the project. Right now, it has these old curved sections of concrete. We're gonna straighten them up. One, it's gonna give a nice cleaner walkway. Uh, two, it's gonna make it much easier putting the trim for the step down on the new wood floors and such. 
three, we just need to do a little concrete work. And this is the only place we could find to do it. So we're gonna do some concrete work here. So what we had to begin with is we drilled holes in order to insert rebar in and tie the two pieces together. And then uh, we're gonna epoxy those in because engineers always love epoxy when it comes to rebar, tying the two pieces together. I'm just a contractor. Both my sons are engineers, and since they're both here on this project, and Adam, this is his house, is an engineer, that was a battle I wasn't gonna win, so we're just gonna go ahead and put the epoxy in. Then we'll wire the rebar together, put another stick in there, and that's just to give the concrete a little bit of strength. Is this all necessary? Probably not, because it's just all confined in here. It's not like it's in an area going up and down, and this concrete, all it's reinforced already. So we got another section up there that we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and start drilling that one and get it ready. All right, so we gotta set the form in place. We gotta somehow hold this in place. So the easiest is gonna be to just put a two by four out here in front and I'll nail this down into the concrete then we can build up another board on top of it just to keep it from tipping. The weight of the concrete when you put it in here will kind of push it out and this will give us the height that we need to match this floor. So we're going to use a, just a, a hand concrete nail gun. Now they make these where you can put strips in it and nail with it and stuff but this is such a small job we don't need to bother with one of those. We'll do it one at a time. But as always, tools make the job. All right, that's actually enough for the little bit of concrete we're gonna do here. So we'll do that same thing down on this bottom section, then we're ready to go ahead and pour concrete. Basically, the whole purpose of these are gonna be just to keep this from tipping out. So, I don't need a whole lot of them, just a couple of them. We'll take care of the issue. And that little bit there is all that side's gonna need. All right, we're ready to pour concrete. All right, now that we got the form set, it's time to mix that concrete up. You gotta get the water and concrete mixture proper, otherwise you lose strength of the concrete. Let's get it rolling. Now for this job, we're gonna use Maximizer concrete. It's 5,500 PSI, 80 pound bags. It has more coverage than the other 80 pound bags. And it's really not that we need that extra PSI, but better safe than sorry. The big thing you gotta watch is that you don't put too much water in it when you're mixing concrete. If you do, you either need to add some, some more concrete or some Portland in order to thicken it up. The thicker the concrete, the stronger it'll be. You know, one thing about working on family house, you get all the kids involved. I got Adam, it's his house, but his brother Johan is helping today as well. So for this little project that we're doing, we're just going to be mixing it by hand. Uh, we'll just use a shovel to start stirring it up. All right, that looks good. Let's get it in. Look, when you're using a wheelbarrow, one of the tricks to using a wheelbarrow is move the weight to the front of the wheelbarrow. It makes it much easier to push, lift, and control.
You can see we got a bow in that rebar. Everybody always thinks you gotta run it straight. You don't, the whole purpose of rebar is to, to hold concrete together when it cracks, so. So we have to be a little careful how we're putting this concrete in because the walls are painted, the ceiling's painted, fireplace is finished, and uh, we don't want this splashing everywhere. So we're being a little bit careful how we're getting it out of the wheelbarrow and into our forms. You know, one thing about doing concrete work, you're not on your own time. You're on the concrete's time. It's gonna set up on you whether you're ready for it or not. So you've gotta start working it, and you gotta stay working it until you're done. The nice thing is, you gotta go quickly to get it spread out. Then you sit and wait for it to harden some before you can put any kind of finish on it. But again, it doesn't wait for you. You've gotta work the concrete when it's ready. Now, one of the big things, you want the edges to look good, you gotta make sure to tamp it down some so you don't get a bunch of what's called honeycombs, which is dead space. Now, on this, it won't be that critical because it's all gonna be covered up, but still wanna make it look somewhat decent. Tapping the forms helps to bring the cream to the surface of, of the face here as well. You can see how the moisture is coming up with that tapping. The cream and concrete is a mixture of the Portland and the water that comes to the surface and that's what gives you the nice smooth finish. All right, so we got our first batch of concrete in, but it wasn't quite enough to fill the form. You gotta be careful that you don't get cold joints. So you gotta get that next batch coming in pretty darn quick. Down there. Yeah, I'm gonna need a little bit more in here still. Right here. That's not a little bit, but okay. <laughs> By vibrating and shaking it that way, it flattens the concrete out better, but it also brings the cream up so you can get a better finish on it. So we're getting about ready where we can start putting the steel finish on it. We don't need a, a super slick finish on this concrete by any means because it's going to be covered by a wood floor, but it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of finish on it. And it, it just helps to smooth it out a little bit. That's good enough for now. We'll 
probably pass on it one more time, but like I said, we don't need a, a super great finish on this. One other thing that we're gonna do is use the edging tool on it. Now the edging tool is just what gives it that round edge on the corner because if concrete is just tight square, the edge is, the, it's gonna chip off. Now I just dipped the tool in water because when you got it moist that way, it'll slick across the concrete better. I used this tool last, didn't clean it good. And again, we're not gonna worry about a, a super slick finish because it's all getting covered by wood floor anyways. If I did nothing else to it, this would be good enough. I'll probably hit it one more time just for the heck of it, but it'll get the job done. All right, so we poured the concrete yesterday. We're ready, we're pulling our forms right now. And uh, those nails that we hammered into the concrete using the nail gun, they hold up a whole lot better than what you would think they would. As you can see, it takes quite a bit of uh, prying to get them loose. In fact, that one, the nail pulls right through the wood instead of the nail coming out of the concrete. So they do a great job of holding up. We got a good straight edge. We're ready to start laying floors. All right, so today I got over to Adam's house. They were building the hearth and Adam started questioning, why are we building this with wood? And we took the time to look up the international building codes. Nothing combustible is supposed to be in the hearth. We had to pull all that material out. Now we gotta go pick up concrete material and build this thing right. Let's run down to the landscaping mm -hmm. and see if they have the little concrete uh, brick. So I'm headed over to the landscape department looking for some concrete blocks to fill in on the hearth and all of a sudden I see these gorgeous porcelain tiles. They would match in with the house and really set that fireplace apart. These would make nice on top of it. See that's kind of what I was talking about. But yeah that really wouldn't look bad I wouldn't think. Okay. You want to take one home? I think so. Here's a cart. These things are heavy. Yeah. I don't think you'd even have to glue this down. So. You would. Okay. Oh, that actually looks nice. Yeah. I kind of like the gray myself just because it's a little contrast. That room needs some contrast. That's kind of what I was thinking in the countertops. Have those little, that little bit of gray mixed in. Yeah. All right, running through the store, we gotta pick everything up. We gotta get these 80 pound bags of concrete. Thank God Adam's with, because I hate picking those things up. When we're finished with that, we gotta go load the blocks in the truck.
That good? Yep. All right, we got all our materials together. We got them unloaded at the job site. Now, it's time for the backbreaking part, building the hearth. Join me in two weeks on an all new Texas Home Improvement where we'll be wrapping up Adam's house and I'm gonna show you how to pick that perfect Christmas tree. Hey, got a question during the week? Go to our website, thipro.com and click on the Ask Jim button. If you're looking for a great contractor, one that'll treat you fair and get the job done right, go to thipro.com and take a look at the contractors in your area that I've already checked out. Hey, got a question about your project? Join me on News Talk 820 WVAP every Saturday at 12 o'clock. You can call in, ask your question, and get your project going. You recording that? I'm trying to tell me how to leave the car. <laughs> well, you're way over the front. Isn't it pretty wild how Charlie mimicked you verbatim? Oh man, I gotta watch everything I do because whether I'm at the rodeo waving my hat or finishing concrete, he does exactly what I do. And worse, he kind of says the same thing I say. How you clean your sheep off? First, take a brush, clean the outside of your sheep like this. I'm gonna get clean it up. Brush it off. Well, I, I told the boys, they're done. When I'm finished doing radio and TV, Charlie's taking over for me. Second of all, if you get clunky on it, it doesn't wait for you. You have to get it on time off. And if concrete's on there, it's stale, yeah. and you didn't get it off, Child, child labor laws don't count when it's family. Get to work, Charlie. Show mom while what? you're bragging about. Just do it. Do what you want to do. Yeah, like that will be news to her. <laughs>